the last domain of the COVID processes is called monitor evaluate and assess. The second process is to monitor evaluate and assess the system of internal control. The identifier of the process is MEA2. The process ensures that the control environment is constantly monitored and assessed, by internal or external parties. Control deficiencies should be identified and improvement actions should be taken. Standards for internal control assessments should be organized and maintained. The process purpose is to provide stakeholders with transparency on the internal control system, providing them with trust that the enterprise objectives are achievable with a clear understanding of risks. The process supports the achievement of three IT-related goals. The first goal is to ensure the compliance with external laws and regulations. Its achievement is measured by the cost of IT non-compliance, and by the number of non-compliance issues reported to the board. The second goal is to ensure that IT-related business risk is managed. Its achievement is measured by the percent of critical processes and services covered by the risk assessments, and by the risk profile update frequency. The third supported goal is to ensure IT compliance with internal policies. The achievement of this goal is measured by the number of non-compliance incidents, and by the frequency of policy review and update. The process has four process goals. The first goal is to ensure that the processes meet the enterprise internal control system requirements, and its achievement is measured by the percent of processes compliant with the internal control targets. The second goal is to ensure that assurance activities are planned and executed effectively, and its achievement is measured by the percent of assurance initiatives performed according to plan standards. The third goal is to ensure that independent assurance of the internal control system is performed, and its achievement is measured by the percent of processes being reviewed independently. The fourth goal is to ensure that internal control is established and deficiencies are identified, and its achievement is measured by the number of major internal control breaches. The process has eight practices, and the first practice is to monitor internal controls. The entities responsible for this practice include, the chief risk officer, the audit function, and several IT heads and managers. The entity that is held accountable is the chief information officer. The practice receives three inputs which are, the results of third-party risk assessments from the AP-012 process, the ISMS audit reports from the AP-013 process, and the industry standards from external sources. It generates two outputs which are, the results of internal control monitoring and reviews, and the results of benchmarking and evaluations, both to be used by most of the other processes. The activities involved in this practice include, performing internal control monitoring activities based on the organization's governance standards and the industry best practices. Independent evaluations of the internal control system should be considered, and the boundaries of the control system should be defined. The control activities should be applied, and corrective actions should be prioritized and implemented. The IT internal control system should be maintained, and the changes to risks should be considered. The performance of the IT control framework should be regularly evaluated, and the internal controls of external providers should be assessed.